What are you doing to give yourself the longest health span possible? Are Sirtuins on your radar? I'm sure you have heard of them by now, so let's just have a quick recap and then we can see what we know for each one and what we can do, eat and supplement with to get the greatest benefit. What are they? Sirtuins are a family of proteins that protect cells from disease and death and assist energy metabolism, cellular stress responses, and genomic stability. They serve as metabolic sensors and help to regulate cellular homeostasis and cellular health. They are involved in several lifespan regulating pathways and their decline with age correlates with and may contribute to many age-related pathologies and their increased activation may have many health benefits. I'll link my other Sirtuins video in the description below if you want to go into a bit more depth. What do they do? Well, Sirtuins help to keep your body healthy and support a long lifespan. They play important roles in so many processes, it is easy to think the list is oh, endless. From mitochondrial biogenesis, your circadian rhythms, the cellular stress response, both oxidative and genotoxic, control of energy metabolism, cell survival, DNA repair, tissue regeneration, inflammation, immune response, DNA transcription, and neuronal signaling. Adding to the complexity, there is a growing list of chemical reactions that the mammalian sirtuins catalyze, including long chain fatty acid deacylations, which is basically just waste disposal at a cellular level. That's an awful lot of long words. Should we try to simplify things? Just a little bit. So let's have a look at the systems of the body and how sirtuins interact with those. In the adipose tissue, they enable fatty acid mobilization from the tissue, enables lipid metabolism as the energy is converted for use. In the brain, they reduce neurological inflammation and improve brain cell metabolism. In the skeletal muscle, they're involved in cellular differentiation in stem cells, they improve fatty acid utilization and are involved in insulin action for metabolization. In cellular functions, they promote cell survival under stress and genomic stability promoting DNA repair. In the liver, they're involved in fat metabolism for energy and gluconeogenesis or making glucose from stored fat. In the pancreas, they regulate insulin secretion and are involved in beta cell protection against type 2 diabetes. Let's have a look at them one by one to see what they do in a bit more detail. CERT1. This is required for and supports mitochondrial biogenesis. It helps to regulate energy metabolism and supports the activation of thyroid T3 hormone. It may offer protection against neurodegenerative diseases including Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. It may help with the treatment of insulin resistance and diabetes to reduce the risk of age-associated weight gain by supporting the leptin sensitivity to support liver function and body homeostasis. It may help human embryonic stem cell differentiation. And in some mice studies, high levels of CERT1 overexpression recapitulates many of the benefits of calorie restriction, including increased metabolic activity reduced blood lipid levels and improved glucose metabolism. But this interestingly does not come with a necessarily longer lifespan. And a moderate overexpression of CERT1 protects from inflammation, liver cancer, diabetes and hepatic stetosis. But these again do not correlate with them living longer, but they do get a better quality of life. CERT2 this may help to lower mitochondrial activity and fatty acid metabolism. It may also help to support metabolism and reduce the risk of obesity. CERT3. This may help to fight and reduce the risk of oxidative stress. Low levels of CERT3 may be linked to insulin resistance and fatty liver disease. And CERT4 may offer tumour suppressive benefits. It may also discourage mitochondrial glutamine metabolism and as a result help to modulate metabolic response to DNA damage. And it also may help to reduce insulin secretion. CERT5 may help mitochondrial metabolism 
and ammonia detoxification and removal. And CERT6 helps to support genome stability and DNA repair. Low levels of CERT6 may result in metabolic problems and age-related health issues. CERT6 overexpressing mice are also resistant to hypoxia and to the detriment of a high-fat diet. In humans, loss of CERT6 activity has been directly implicated in the progression of a highly fatal form of pancreatic cancer. And then finally, CERT7. This is important for both RDNA transcription and DNA repair mechanisms. And interestingly, it can also reportedly cause old and dormant hair follicles to start growing again. This was in the news recently. That is quite a list indeed, and it is not exhaustive. New studies are being released all the time. But I know what you really want to know. How can I get some of that Sichuan action? Well, come a little closer and I shall dispense what I know for your benefit. How to activate them. Now, I like to think of the body's systems as seeking a natural balance. Before we think about boosting levels of everything, we should be seeking to remove the factors that reduce our natural levels first, just like you would fix the leak first if your boat was sinking. So your first thoughts should be towards lifestyle and diet interventions. Now these are not only free or at least easily affordable, but they also have so many knock-on effects that to not be using them, well, it doesn't really make any sense. Now the foundations of your routine needs to start with your sleep. Sleep is your superpower. I'll link my video below because I cannot cover it all here. However, when the circadian rhythms are disrupted, levels of CERT1 and CERT3 will drop, and this corresponds with feelings of lower energy levels. Then right after sleep, you should be thinking of your exercise routine. CERT1 pathways are activated during high energy demands, such as high intensity exercise, and with further research, I'm sure we will see benefits from steady state cardio and strength training to the same degree, as they all enhance your NAD levels. More on this in a bit when I discuss supplements. In a similar way, hot and cold stressors, such as saunas and cold showers or ice baths, have also been shown to boost NAD levels, along with CERT1. Activities that can be considered again to be high energy demand situations. Then we have fasting. The evidence so far seems to suggest that short fasts are best for certs 1 to 4, with longer fasts benefiting cert 6. Then we come to diet, another foundational cornerstone of healthy longevity that you should be looking into very seriously, as it is where your body gets what it needs, and also it impacts your microbiome, something that, well, it's at the core of your entire health and well-being. A recent publication reports that omega-3 fatty acids are effective in reversing the reduction of CERT1 levels, such as in oily fish, seafood and algae, through to nuts and seeds such as flax, chia, hemp, walnuts and peanuts. Polyphenols have a stimulatory effect on CERT1, 2 and 6 activity and maybe more and they can be found in many citrus fruits and green vegetables such as berries, chilies, capers, celery, kale, rocket, grapes, onions, apples, tea and of course olive oil. Then there is my favourite, cacao which I have on my porridge every morning along with various berries, seeds and olive oil. A true Sichuan feast to get the day started properly. And just in case you wanted even more choice, these foods are also high in polyphenols. Bitter vegetables, coffee, green tea, dark chocolate, ginger, turmeric, curcumin, asparagus, broccoli, kiwis, basil, rosemary, oregano, thyme, pecans, cherries, plums, avocado, elderberry and brown seaweed. Now, flavonoids are a natural phytochemical that can help activate CERT1. It can be found in foods such as onions, green tea, apples, berries, and also in curcumin, boswellia, ginger, and rosemary. I'm starting to see a pattern here, are you? And then we move on to supplementation. Now, it is true that these are targeting similar, if not the same, pathways and mechanisms as we have already seen with exercise, food and all the other interventions. But you do get a nice big fat controlled dose from them. Resveratrol is a polyphenol supplement and quercetin is a flavonoid, which were just mentioned in the food section above. 
Obviously you can far exceed the dose possible through foods like this, but that is not always necessary. It is about balance. There is also a seaweed based supplement that you can get for CERT 6 activation. But the bit we need to think about really is your nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide or NAD levels. You see, sirtuins are only able to function with the help of NAD. It's a power source for the body in effect, in the simplest terms. NAD is a coenzyme located in all your living cells and it is essential to cellular metabolism and a whole bunch of other important biological processes. They break down acetyl from NAD to make free nicotinamide or NADH to allow it to function for a longer time. In a healthy body there needs to be a balance between the oxidized and reduced forms of nicotinamide referred to as a NAD-NADH ratio. This ratio provides a clue to the nutritional status of each cell, so sirtuins know what to do to achieve balance. NAD is necessary for both energy metabolism and DNA repair, and sirtuins are there to make sure that there are enough NAD coenzymes available in your body for what needs to be done. Examples of NAD boosting molecules include NMN, nicotinamide riboside, and inhibitors of CD38, a protein coding gene, such as apigenin, another plant compound, and quercetin, the flavonoid mentioned earlier. Niacin has also been shown to support energy metabolism and to elevate NAD levels in muscle, blood, and other tissues. Foods that are high in niacin include liver and other organ meats, grass-fed red meat, pasture-raised poultry, eggs, wild-caught fish, nutritional yeast, grass-fed dairy, algae, seaweed, and mushrooms. And then there is also the indirect effects of magnesium, which is a mineral that's important for muscle health, nerve function, brain health, mental health, relaxation, healthy blood pressure, and immune health. And finally, melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone primarily released by your pineal gland and supports the circadian rhythm and sleep-wake cycle. Melatonin supplements support sleep and can reduce insomnia if you have problems in that direction. Now a bit of a roundup. It seems the news is again full of sirtuins and this time all about the recent study that showed that restoration of energy homeostasis by CERT6 extended healthy lifespan in mice that is. But alongside the vocal proponents such as David Sinclair there are also those less enthusiastic about the claims being made. Charles Bremner for instance states that the CERT2 yeast results did not occur in all yeast strains and even more Volta Longo deleted CER2 and extended chronological lifespan, thereby showing, he claims, that CER2 is not a key mediator of lifespan even in yeast, and then further to dispute that resveratrol is even an activator of CER1, to which others have also made their counterclaims. I think personally, there are many claims being made right now as new things are discovered and links understood. And the truth is, we are still at the beginning of our journey of understanding it all. It is highly likely we will find links with how they interact with the myriad of other systems in our bodies. But that doesn't mean you cannot tweak your lifestyle and diet to benefit right now. After all, most of the changes are pleasant and known to be beneficial for your health anyway. So do you eat sir, foods or sirtuin activating foods? Which ones do you have in your diet? Gotta say, I love my breakfast. Why not let us know in the comments below? I would love to hear your thoughts on the subject. And hit that like button to show your support and help this fledgling channel, if you would be so kind. It makes all the difference. And subscribe if you have not done so already. And whilst you are here, why not try this next video on the food that we eat? It is one of the cornerstones of staying fit and healthy longer. But if you've seen that, why not try this other one? And until next time, thank you for dropping by.